Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Mgram Sews. This video tutorial is for this really awesome bag and it's called the L-Piece Convertible Backpack by Deja Designs. This backpack has lots of great features, but before I discuss them, there's just a few things I wanted to go over. First of all, this tutorial is filmed like a sew along. What that means is there's no parts that are sped up, no parts that are missed. You see me doing everything, including clipping, sewing, everything is shown. The only time I won't show you things is when there's something that's done, you know, two, three, four times. So for example, the handles and straps, I'll show you how to sew one and then I go off camera and I do the rest. That's just because I don't want the tutorial to be that much longer. I really don't feel that you need to sit there and watch me sew that many when you've seen me sew one. The other thing I don't show is when I'm installing rivets. So things like that that I don't feel are important, I will go off. So it's usually rivets and sewing things that there's more than one of. So that is one thing I wanted to mention. The other thing I wanted to mention is I don't give any measurements. So there's no mention of even seam allowances. I don't show rulers, cutting mats, nothing. You don't even see pattern pieces. And that's for the protection of the designer, but also because I often film during testing. And sometimes what happens during testing is testers often find that maybe a measurement doesn't work right. So the designer has to change that. So if the designer does make changes, after I film my tutorial, my tutorial is not affected by the changes, you can still follow along and construct your bag. So now that I've discussed some of these important things I wanted to go over, let's discuss the features of the bag. So first of all, you'll notice that there is handles and the handles come up through the flap here. When we turn to the back, there are the backpack straps and they are completely removable. You just unclip all your swivel hooks and remove them completely. Now, one of the options for the pattern is to add a crossbody strap or shoulder strap here on the sides of the bag. I didn't add that because I wanted to add the magnetic snaps here so that my bag can cinch in at the sides, but I do walk you through how to add those connectors here on the sides if you want to have that crossbody bag. So you do have lots of different options for carrying this bags. It's really cool. When you move the backpack straps, you have this zipper pocket back here. So for extra security, you could put, say, your wallet in here if it'll fit, or your cell phone so it's against your back and you'll feel it if it's ringing. So that's a really nice feature on the back, and it has this zipper overlay as well. Again, we have the handles. They come up through the flap, and the flap is closed with magnetic snaps. So when you open it up, you still have your handle, but underneath the flap is a slip pocket here. So you can put maybe, you know, a book in here or, you know, your grocery list, anything you want inside that front flap. When you open the bag, as you can see, it's extremely roomy, lots of room, and it even fits my water bottle. That's awesome. That's so cool. So my water bottle even fits inside. So there's lots of room. So this is a great bag for if you're out traveling or walking around for the day, maybe you're going to festivals or something and you want a backpack, you know, that can have some snacks and your water bottle and everything you need. This is a great backpack for that. On one side of the bag, you have a zipper pocket here. So you have a zipper pocket there. And on the other side, we have a divided slip pocket. So this is great for, you know, anything you don't want loose in the bottom of your bag, maybe your keys, you want them to have them so that they're not just in the bottom of your bag. Depending on the zipper pull you use, you can even add a little, a little swivel hook to your key ring and then hook them onto your zipper pull so they're just dangling there and easy to find. It's really great for staying organized. And again, a great bag for everyday bag, when you're on vacation, maybe festivals, whatever you've got going on. And again, on the sides, I decided to add the magnetic snaps. There is an option to add a connector here so that you can make this a crossbody bag. And there is the option to not even add the side connectors and just have your bag like this. So I'm just going to show you, your bag would look like this when it's all snapped together with the flap. So you would have it open. But I decided, as I mentioned, to have it so that mine cinch in on the sides my bag doesn't want to cooperate now. So just cinching it in on the sides. And then we pull our handle through the opening on the flap, just like that. And then we have our little handles again. And it's great for carrying just like this. You could even carry your backpack or if you added the strap for the crossbody bag or shoulder bag, you can have a shoulder bag. And I do mention in the tutorial a little extra at the end for some extra security. So you'll want to watch all the way to the end for that little tip for extra security. It's really a great bag. If you like more pockets, you could, you know, add another zipper pocket inside. 
it's awesome. I love pockets because I love everything for being organized and in a spot. And I have particular things that I like to be in pockets and some things that I like to just be loose in the bottom of my bag. So for example, medication is great for having the pockets because it's easy to find. I really like this. I think it's a really great bag for every day. You could even use it as, you know, a gym bag or an overnight bag because as you notice, it's pretty big. Could fit maybe one change of clothes depending on the clothing that you have. It's an awesome bag. And if you don't want to have the backpack straps and you just want to have the crossbody strap and your handles, you could just omit those connectors here and the backpack straps and don't add them at all. And as I did here, I didn't even add the crossbody strap. If you don't want the crossbody strap or these connectors and just handles, then you just omit that all together and it'll help make it a little bit of a quicker sew as well. This area here is great for a panel or some embroidery or something really nice here to put here. You can really have a lot of fun with this bag. This bag is a great bag. And I know the tutorial is a little bit longer because I do go into a lot of detail, but I promise it really doesn't take that long to make and you're really going to enjoy it, especially when you're done your bag. You'll look at it and you'll be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I made this bag. So again, this is the L piece convertible backpack. It's by Deja Designs. I'm going to walk you through all the steps of making this bag. So let's get started. So the very first thing you'll want to do is read through the entire pattern. This is very important because oftentimes designers give information regarding different materials you're using and different interfacings to use depending on the materials you're using. So you'll want to read through to make note of that before you begin cutting out your pattern pieces. It's also important because it familiarizes you with the pattern and the construction of the bag so that that way there as you're going through each step you'll know what's coming up and you'll understand how the bag is being constructed a little bit better. Once you've read through the entire pattern, you're ready to get cutting out your pattern pieces, and then you're ready to cut out your materials. For this tutorial, I've decided to use a canvas for my exterior, as well as a vinyl. And then for the interior, I'm using a quilting cotton. I've already gone ahead and interfaced all my pattern pieces as instructed in the pattern. So there are some prep work that you need to do. So I've already gone ahead and done that. So as you'll see here, I've decided to use Decoville Light for my vinyl. So I have already interfaced my Decoville Light to my pattern pieces, including to my flap, which is right here. So I've interfaced it to my flap as well. And I've also made some markings too that need to be made. And this is all in the prep work. So for example, on our zipper overlay, we need to cut out the little zipper window here. And I've already gone ahead and done that, as well as some markings on some pattern pieces that need to be made. Because as I mentioned in the beginning, I don't show any rulers or uh, pattern pieces or cutting mats or anything like that that give away any measurements. So I've gone ahead and made some markings on my pattern pieces that need to be made. So another thing I have made the markings for are for the magnetic snaps on my flap. I've gone ahead and done that as well. The other thing I like to do is mark on my pattern piece what each pattern piece is. So for example, I know it's hard to see because my interfacing's over this, but on this one, on my overlay, I have it marked with an H. The other thing I like to do is mark where the top is. So you'll see I have a T for top. Because the pattern pieces, you want to make sure you have them oriented in the correct direction when you go to construct the bag because then otherwise things won't fit. So I've already gone ahead and done that as well. I'm just going to flip all my pieces back over. So I've done all that prep work and that prep work is given in the pattern. So you'll want to go ahead and do that prep work now if you haven't already. Once you have all your pieces cut out, any measurements and markings that you need to make and all your interfacing attached, we're ready to begin. And the other thing I just wanted to note is I like to place all my hardware in a bag and I used to clip my zippers together but I was finding they were falling on the floor a lot so I just started putting them in this bag if they're small enough to fit in the bag. So I do have my zippers trimmed to length because I've read through and I know what length they need to be and I mark the zippers for what they're for. And this is important when you're making a bag that has lots of zippers in it because sometimes zippers are different lengths but sometimes they're just slightly the same so there's just a small difference so it's really important to mark what they're going to be used for so that you don't get them confused and use the wrong zipper so again this is all my hardware it's just in a little bag keeps it all together so I don't lose anything and then my rivets when I use them they're in a little container that I have for it so once you have that done we're going to get started so the first thing we're going to start on is our connectors handles and straps so we're going to start with the connector and this is my backpack connector here, and it's going to be this piece. And what you're going to do is you're going to draw a line down the entire length 
of the, the connector. So the entire length in the center. Then you'll take some double-sided tape and we're going to place it on either side of the line. I'm just going to place this back in the bag. So you're going to place the double-sided tape on either side of the line. Now, if you're using quilting cotton or the canvas like I am, I could take this to my iron and just give it a really quick press and press it in to meet in the center. However, for this tutorial, I'm just going to go ahead and use some double-sided tape because I don't want to have to get up. I know it sounds kind of lazy, but I don't want to get up too much. So I'm just going to use the double-sided tape. And this is something you can do if you're using a vinyl as well, or cork or faux leather, you can use double-sided tape because you can't press it with your iron. So the double-sided tape is placed all the way down on either side of the line. We'll remove the paper backing. And then we're going to press the long edges in to meet at the center line. And just press them in all the way down, just like that. And then the next long edge, press it in to meet the center line. Just like that. So you have it pressed in to meet the in the center. Now what we're going to do is we're going to top stitch both long edges of our strap all the way down, or of our connector, sorry, not strap. So change your stitch length to the length you like to use for top stitching. And right now, as I said, all I'm doing is top stitching down each long edge of the connector. I'm trimming my threads now. I try to trim it over the garbage, but I always find them all over the floor or stuck to Buddy and Missy. And it's even worse when it's stuck to Missy because her fur is black. And when it's a white thread like I'm using now, it really shows up and it's just kind of funny. That's I always say that's how you know that I'm a cat mom that sews because they have little threads stuck all over them. It's like glitter, sewing glitter. Anyways, so that's how the strap looks or the connector looks once we've top stitched it. Now what we need to do is we need to divide this connector up into four pieces. And there's a measurement given in the pattern for what the lengths are that you're going to cut this at. And I've already gone ahead and made those marks on the pieces. So you can see there, there's a line I've made the lines that I need to make to cut them. So I'm going to cut directly on those lines. You'll want to refer to the pattern for the measurement for this. So just like that. Now, once you have them cut into their little pieces, so you'll have four that look like this. So set two, two sets and cut the same length. So this is cut the same length and this is cut the same length. Now we need to take our D-rings. And we're going to thread these connectors through our D-rings. And just to note, the bottom two connectors are the longer ones. So if you look here, these are the longer connectors. So they're the longer ones, those are your bottom ones. So I'm going to take a piece of tape after and I'm going to mark that those are the bottom so that I remember when I go to attach these into the bag. So we'll take the connector and we'll thread it through the D-ring. The part that's being threaded through is going to be the side that, or how it's going to be threaded through is where the seam is here. You want that enclosed so when you fold them together, you don't have the seam on the exterior. It's touching each other inside the folded piece. So just like this. So here's my seam and here's the seam of the D-ring and they're all attached inside. They're touching each other. I hope that makes sense. So just thread them all through, line up your short edges and add a clip. And 
And then we're going to baste the short edges together. And this will just help hold it so that we don't have to keep clips there the whole time. And you can still keep the same stitch length you were using for top stitching. tip. I like to start with my needle down before I start sewing. I just find that it helps prevent the connectors from shifting so that they stay lined up on the sides. So I always turn my hand wheel to put my needle down. And this was something I discovered when I started using my industrial machine because I always have to start with the needle down. Not that I just discovered it, but I just realized that it just makes it so much easier. So I try to do it every time now rather than not doing it at all. The industrial machine doesn't have an automatic needle up down like this machine does. So that makes it a little bit easier to remind yourself to do that. So as I was saying, the two bottom connectors are the longer ones. So I'm going to mark them with some tape and I'm going to write bottom on them just so I know. Just like that. So I've marked that they are the bottom connectors and I'm just going to place these off to the side for now. We don't need them just yet. So I've just hung them off to the side. Now, if you're doing the optional side connectors, I'm going to grab one of my pieces that I had cut to show you how to do this. I'm not doing the optional side connectors. And again, that's another reason why it's important to read through the pattern because there's many different options for the bag. So you want to choose what you're going to do so that you cut out all the right pieces and you have all the right hardware so that you're ready when you get to those steps. So the optional side connector, what you're going to do is fold it first. So you're going to draw a line down the center. And just to note, this is going to be the same as when you're doing your straps too. You will make that line down the entire length of the strap. Once you have that line drawn down the center, you're going to do the same thing we did with that connector and fold them so that they meet in the middle. So just fold it so it meets in the middle. Just like that. And you'll have a piece that'll look like this. Once you have that, you'll then top stitch the connector down the entire length on both sides. Then you'll thread each side connector through a D-ring and add a small piece of double-sided tape. You'll remove the tape and then fold the connector in half towards the tape. So you'll fold it so it goes like this. So you'll fold it so it's in half towards the tape. So your seams here, the short edges, will meet in the middle of the connector because we don't want any raw edges. So I don't have an extra D-ring here. I'll use my swivel hook so you can see what I'm saying. So here's one of my swivel hooks and we'll just imagine that this is a D-ring. So we slide it on, everything's top stitched. Then you're going to fold this connector so they meet in the center. So fold the short edges so they meet in the center just like that. So here they are in the center. I'm going to add a clip, add another clip and we're pretending that this swivel hook is a D-ring. So it'll look like this. So this Short raw edges meet in the center here behind, and then we have no raw edges on the top or the bottom of the connector. You'll add another piece of double-sided tape here to the section where the raw edges meet. And if your tape is not strong enough, she does say to use some clips to help hold it, like I was just doing there. You can use some clips. Once that's done, you can place that to the side for now. Don't remove the backing of the paper on the tape because we're not using them yet until we get to the step where we construct the sides. So that's how you construct your side connectors if that's the choice that you're using for or the option that you're using for your bag. Next, we're going to make our handles and our backpack straps. So we have two handles 
here, and then we have the two backpack straps. I'm only going to show you how to do one handle, and then I'll go off camera and I'll show the others. I just don't feel like you need to sit here and watch me do three more because it's all the same construction. Also to note, I'm going to do my backpack handles a little bit differently. I'm going to make them double-sided, and that's just because of the amount of material I had. I decided I didn't have enough material to cut my handles the exact width and length, so I decided to make them double-sided, and I just like double-sided handles. Now, the way I make them, I will post the link below. I think I do them a little bit differently now. So if you want to make yours double-sided, you can. You can just pause this tutorial, click the link below, and follow the instructions. Or if you have a method that you like to use that you know for how to make double-sided straps, you can definitely make them that way, as well as your handles, too. You can make them double-sided, too, if you prefer. The choice is really yours, but I'm going to show you how it is given in the pattern. So. We have our handle. We're going to draw a line down the entire length of the center, just like that. Once you have this, you're then going to add some double-sided tape. And she does say to reinforce the handle so that the handles stand up once the bag is finished. So I'm going to go grab some reinforcement. I have some tape here that I can use or some stuff that I can put in the center of my handle. So I'm just gonna go grab that and then I'll come back and we'll continue on. All right, so I have this stuff for reinforcing my handles. And that's, as was mentioned, is just to help the handles stand up once they're finished. Now this is a little bit wider than what I need, but that's okay, I'll just fold it. So I'm going to place this to one side of the line. So right down against the center line. And because it's a tape, I'm going to use my tape scissors to cut it. Now, if you don't have anything like this, don't worry. You can just skip this part. You can also use some heavy interfacing, so Decaville Light or Decaville Heavy. Anything you want, just a thin strip down so that it helps hold it together. Just make sure that your machine can stitch through it before you do that. Now that we have that done, we're going to add double-sided tape to either side of the center line. And then we're going to do the same thing that we did with the connector. We're going to fold the long edges in to meet in the center. But for this one, we don't want them touching right in the center. And the reason for that is you end up with this bit of bulk in the center when it's like that. And it sort of makes that folded edge in the center not look as nice when we fold it the second time. So I leave mine so that they're just a smidge away from the center line. So remove the paper backing, fold these in towards the center line, but leave a little bit of a gap. Just the smallest little gap is all you need. Again, it doesn't need to be a very big gap. Just like that. So it's folded in the center. And I'm just finger pressing. So now they're folded in the center, but see, you can see I left that little gap. Now we need to take this and we need to fold it in half so those two folded edges meet, just like that. So I'm going to use some double-sided tape again. And on one half, I'm placing it down the center. Oops, didn't stick, it stuck to my nail instead. There we go. Didn't wanna come off. Now I'm folding it in so those folded edges meet. and the double-sided tape will help hold it in place. Oops. 
just like that. Now we need to top stitch both the long edges using the seam allowance given in the pattern. So I'm going to go back to my top stitch length that I like to use for my straps. And to prevent any shifting, I'm going to come back to where I started originally top stitching. And I'm going to go back down that side. So going in the same direction on both sides of the strap. Or in this case, the handle. I'm cutting all my threads. And that is how the handle, oh, there's a thread. That's how the handle will look when you're done. You have two edges top stitch, the two long edges top stitch, just like that. And then we have this really nice handle. So I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to sew the second handle and create my backpack strap. And the other thing I'm going to do is continue on because in the pattern, when you're making the backpack straps, there's some measurements and marks that you need to make if you're going to be using rivets. So you'll want to make those marks, punch the holes for your rivets. You'll also want to add your strap ends, so these little things, to your backpack straps, provided you're using them. And if you don't have these, I do have a tutorial on my YouTube channel for how to make nice finished straps. So I'll put that in the link below and that way there if you don't have strap end hardware, not to worry because you can still finish them and make really beautiful backpack straps without the strap ends on your hard uh, on the end of your backpack straps. So again, I'll post that link below so that you don't have to use these if you don't have them. But I'm going to install that and I'm also going to punch the holes for where my rivets are going to go and attach all that as well, including the hardware that needs to go onto my backpack straps. I will also add that, but I won't do it on both. I'll come back and I'll show you how to construct one backpack strap, but I'll have all my holes punched for my rivets and everything. So I will show you how to do that. So I'm going to go create all the straps and then I'll come back and show you how to make the one backpack strap. So I've constructed one of the backpack straps and added all the hardware that needs to be added, including my rivets. So this is how it looks, it's adjustable. Now I wanted to show you how I do it for the second one. So I'm going to put this one to the side and show you how to construct the second one. So I've already punched all my holes that I need for the rivets, so I've done that already. Now, if you don't have rivet, rivets, what you could do is make the marks where those measurements are given. So draw a line across and you can actually sew at that mark and make a box and you could even uh, stitch an X inside that box to help give it a little bit of extra stability and, sh and strength. If you don't have rivets or Chicago screws, if you do, you can just punch the holes as directed in the pattern. But Again, it's just nice to have the option for those of us who do not have rivets or Chicago screws. So it's nice to be able to still sew this bag without using all the hardware that you may or may not have. So to make the backpack strap, what we need to do is first your strap ends, if you're adding them, are going to be attached to the end of your straps. Again, I'll post that link to the tutorial below for making your straps have nice finished edges. You're going to take your slider and my slider bar is one that can move. And so I just let it drop down to the bottom of the slider. Bring your strap through, push the middle bar against your strap. So it looks like this, it's against the strap and bring the end of the strap back through the slider. So it goes over that middle bar. So when you see it look like this, it's over the middle bar. You'll then take it. And if you're not using the rivets, as I mentioned, you can sew it. You'll use your rivets and you'll install a rivet where that mark was made for that hole. So you just install a rivet and I'll go off and I'll press this after with my tabletop press. So you don't need to see me do that. Now with your piece facing with the strap end up, so you can see my strap end, I'm going to fish one of my swivel hooks through 
the or onto the strap. So right now I have a wrong side and a right side of my strap. So the strap is double sided. So the right side, the side that I'm going to be facing out is the side that my swivel hook is on. So my swivel hook when I'm putting it on is against the table. I'm going to bring the loose end back to my slider, slide the loose end through the slider, just like that. So it's on one side. Again, push that metal bar, middle bar against the strap and fish the other loose end of the strap over the middle bar so it looks like this. We will bring this down. So I'm just going to tighten it as much as it can go. And then we're going to add our last swivel hook. So again, I want the swivel hook part to be on the right side of my strap. So the side that's going to be facing out when I'm wearing the backpack. So the best way to do this is have your slider so that the slider bar is against the table, the right side of the slider is against the table, and then your swivel hook will be against the table. Slide it on and either sew or add your rivets. Oops, just made a rivet mess. So it looks like this, and that's how your strap will look. Now, I'm going to pull on this and make sure that it's right before I set my rivets, or even before you sew, you can just put clips here instead, and you can just give it a tug and make sure that the strap is correctly, a correct, incorrect place, sorry, so that it's not done wrong and that this just doesn't slide all loosely all over the place. So mine's good. I'm going to go set my rivets and then I'll come back and we will continue on. And once this is done, our prep work's done, so then we're gonna get on to making our bag. So both my backpack straps are all complete. As you can see, I've got the swivel hook and slider attached to both. We'll place this to the side. And now we're going to move on, as I mentioned, to constructing our bag. So I'm just gonna get myself to the page we're on. Now we need our zipper pockets and our zipper overlay. So to start, you want to take one of your main exterior pieces and one main lining. However, I'm going to show you how to do this on the main exterior, and then I'll go off and I will sew the one for my main lining, because again, I don't feel you need to sit there and watch me do it a second time. It's going to be the exact same construction. You're just going to use measurements that are given in the pattern, but the construction, so how we sew it and how we install the zipper and everything else is the same for both the lining and the exterior. So we need our double-sided tape. And on the exterior main, you need to make a mark that is from the top down. And also, if you haven't already, now is the time to make that mark in the center where your center marks are. So you'll make the mark from the top down for where you're going to be placing your zipper overlay. Take your zipper overlay, and if you haven't already, you'll want to cut out that zipper window. And we're going to place some double-sided tape along the two long edges here. Place it in the center. That's where I'm going to place it. And I just like it in the center because then I know that I'm not stitching over it at all. So just like that. Now, if you don't have double-sided tape, you can use some glue. However, you will need to let the glue dry before you stitch this in place. So now I'm just going to fold my exterior in half and I'm just going to cause a crease in the center, just like that. So I have a crease here so I can see where it is. Now we need to place this again on our main exterior and we need to place it so it is wrong sides against the right side of our main exterior. And there's two different measurements from the top down as I was mentioning, we need to make a mark from the top down. There's two different measurements depending on what pattern piece or sorry, what size of bag you're making. So I'm making the large for this tutorial. So there's the mark that I need to make for that. But if you're making the small, you wanna make sure you make the mark and the placement for where this is going to go for the small.
So now that I have that center crease, I'm just going to press it one more time because with vinyl it tends to slowly disappear. I'm also going to fold my overlay in half, just creasing it. And we're going to place this so that those center marks meet, but the top edge of our overlay lines up with that mark we made across the top. So that line we made from the top down all the way across our panel, as you can see there, that's where the top edge of the overlay will line up. So remove the backing from the double-sided tape and line this up oop, with the center mark. Press it down and it'll look just like that for the exterior. And the lining will look the same, but of course the lining piece is a bit bigger, so it'll look a little bit different in that way that the piece is a bit bigger. Just fix that. All right, now what we need to do is stitch around the outside edge of the zipper overlay. So the outside edge being this edge, all the way around that outside edge. We don't want any back stitching, so what we're going to do is leave long thread tails on our machine, and then we will stitch all the way around, no back stitching, so just like this, start, no back stitching, and stitch all the way around. Now, if you want to prevent those angled stitches in the corner, what you can do is take one stitch in the corner. So take your stitch length down to the shortest length it can go and take one stitch. Then return your stitch length back to the length, turn the corner and continue sewing. So I'll show you right here, I'll do it here. Zero, one stitch. Back to the length I was using. I'm just moving my tails so that they're out of the way. And I'm going to continue stitching. Now, I'm back where I started. I'm going to lift up my presser foot, lift up my needle, long thread tails, and then I'll come to the back and I'll pull them through to the back. And what I do is I pull on the back thread and that creates a little loop that I can put my seam ripper or awl or whatever through the loop to pull the other side through. So you'll see just like that, there's no tails there. Now I'll take these two thread tails, or four, sorry, and I will tie them together to create a knot. Be careful how hard you pull on your threads because they can break. I've had it happen before. The nice thing is, is if it does happen, it's not all is lost. You just unpick a little bit back and then pull those tails through to the back and do the same thing, tie them off, then start again with long thread tails, Go all the way to the end and pull both the ends of the thread tails. So say you were here, you'll pull those thread tails through to the back, tie them off, and then on the end and tie them off. And then no one will ever know that you had any little accidents. So that's how that looks when it's stitched. You can see I stitched all the way around the exterior. And I know it's a little bit hard to see because my vinyl is champagne color so and the thread sort of matches. I'm just wiping off the chalk as best I can. So just like that. Now we need to cut out that middle here of the zipper overlay because we want the zipper to be able to go inside. So I'm going to fold this in half and I'm going to cut just the center area here. So I didn't cut my overlay, just the center area. Then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to continue cutting without cutting that overlay down the center, just like that. Then I'll turn to the wrong side and I'll continue cutting that overlay out, the zipper window opening out so that it is exposed and I have the opening there. Carefully cutting so that I don't cut my exterior at all. I really like having duckbill scissors for this step because it ensures that I can get nice and close without cutting my exterior. So 
So I'm just cutting it away and it doesn't have to be perfect. No one's going to see it because you're going to be stitching your zipper pocket here. There we go. So it's cut away. I'm just going to put my scissors back. There we go. So now we have that zipper window opening there. Now we need to take our zipper for our pocket. And if you haven't already, there are instructions in the pattern for how to add your pull to your zipper tape. So you'll want to read that if you don't have a zipper pull already attached. I do. I also have a little tutorial on my YouTube channel for how to add a zipper pull to your zipper tape. So I will also link that below in the description so that you can watch that. Now, taking your zipper tape, placing it so it is right sides up on your table, we're going to add some double-sided tape to the long edges of the zipper. So just along the long edges. Remove the paper backing and now, once you have that removed, you need to decide which way you want your pull to face when closed. So as she says in the pattern, she's right-handed, so she prefers the pocket to open to the right, close to the left. So you want your pull to go towards the left when it's closing. So right now, mine is facing to the left. So that's what I'm going to do. But if you want your pocket to face the other way because you're left-handed, you would have the pull facing to the right when it's closing. So I'm going to place my zipper window over top of my zipper, centering it as best I can. And you know what? It's probably easier for me to do this. like that. So there we go. It's centered in the zipper window and you can see my pull faces to the left when it's closed. Now what we need to do is flip this so it is wrong sides up. Seems a little weird but trust the process. We're going to add a piece of double-sided tape along the bottom edge of our zipper here. So along the bottom edge of our zipper place a piece of tape Remove the paper backing. And this is just above that stitching line is where we're going to now place our zipper pocket. So this is piece K and you're going to place it just above that stitching where the stitching was for the bottom edge or around the outer edge of that zipper overlay. So place it so it lines up with that, but also centered. And the pocket will be wrong sides up. So the right side is going against the wrong side right now. I'm just making sure it's nice and straight. Flip this over. And I'm going to add a couple of clips here on the sides just to help hold this in place so that this doesn't come and turn underneath or shift on me. Now what we need to do is again, make long thread tails on your machine. So pull out your, your bobbin and your top thread a bit so you have these long thread tails. And we're going to stitch this in place using the seam allowance given in the pattern. Don't forget to start and stop where you're instructed to start and stop. And I'm just trying to get it all lined up. So stitch all the way across. Now, when you reach your zipper, just move that zipper pull out of the way so you don't hit it. So 
So again, with the long thread tails, and then we're going to pull these through and tie them off in the back. So same thing we did with the zipper overlay. I just pull on the back thread and that creates a loop, which comes up in the back. It's hard to see with my... I'm using white thread and it's hard to see what I'm doing here. Maybe this thread that matches wasn't a good idea. There we go, got it. Tie them off. And again, be careful how tight you pull these because you can break your threads. But as I was mentioning, you can just go back, unpick your stitches, pull the threads to the back, tie them off, and then restart. So I've knotted them. You can also add a little dab of glue to these. I've never had an issue with my threads coming unknotted, but if you just want that extra bit of security, you can definitely do that or add some fray stop. Maybe it's because I knot them so many times, as you'll notice. Then we're going to trim these threads. So trim the threads. Just like that. And so far that's how it's looking. So now you want to take that pocket piece that we just attached and you want to flip it over and bring it down so it's pointing down towards the bottom of the main pan, the lining or exterior main panel. Give it a press. You can even take it to your iron and press it. I'm just finger pressing. So I've given it a press. And if you want to make sure it doesn't shift on you, you could add, if you have clips that are big enough, let's see if this one's big enough, add a clip to the bottom just to hold it in place like that so that it doesn't shift. Because now we need to add the second piece of the zipper pocket, so piece K. And again, this is going to go right sides down, so you're looking at the wrong side, and you're going to line it up with that stitching that we made previously. So place some double-sided tape on the back. Remove the paper backing. And again, my zipper is going right sides against the wrong side of the lining or right sides together with your other zipper pocket. And I'm going to make sure that my zipper pocket lines up on the sides. So just like that. And you want this one to stay facing down. So I'm going to also place clips so that it holds it down. So I have it anchored here and anchored on the sides. And now we're going to stitch this down. So we're going to start here where we stopped, go up the short edge, across the long edge, and back down the short edge, stopping in that same hole we started in originally. Make sure you have long thread tails. So right there is where I start stopped originally. And I'm approaching my zipper pull, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to zip it out of the way. Same thing I did when I stitched the bottom edge. And now turn and come down this side, stopping in the same hole I started in. Lift up my presser foot, long thread tails, and pull them back, bringing them through to the back. There's one. Now I'm going to tie them off. And you could be sewing these so that you're doing the lining and exterior at the same time if you want. I'm just doing it one at a time so I can show you how to do these and or do these two pieces. So the main exterior and the main lining with the zipper overlay in the pockets. 
I'll go off camera and I'll sew the second one, as I was mentioning. Cut your threads. And then we can remove our little anchor pieces at the bottom here. I just removed them. But now we want to sew the sides together and the bottom edge. So what we're going to do is clip the sides. And the other thing Andrea does mention in the pattern is that if you don't have double-sided tape, you can use masking tape to help hold everything in place. That works too, so you would put masking tape here to help hold it down. Whatever you have that works, or if you don't wanna use up all your double-sided tape, that also works too. Now this one here, there's one zipper pocket piece that's longer than the other. We need to trim that so they are the same length. So just trim it up using your scissors. Doesn't have to be perfect. You want to make it perfect, you can definitely take it to your cutting tape, cutting mat and give it a cut. Now the bottom edges have to be folded up and there's a measurement given in the pattern and I'm kind of eyeballing it because I've gotten used to what these measurements look like now. So I'm just gonna eyeball it and then press it with my fingers. Clip it. And what this does is it just helps when we go to finish the bag. You don't have to turn this piece right side in or turn it so it's wrong sides together after because it's already done and you don't need to do this on the exterior one I'm only showing you because the lining needs to have it done this way the lining stays open for turning the bag right sides out later so you'll add clips here just to help hold it in place but you can take this to your iron and press it but that's how it'll look you'll turn these two bottom edges under up so that they're wrong sides together by the measurement given in the pattern only for the lining piece though. The exterior one, you can sew the pocket all the way down the side, across the bottom, and up the other side, moving your main out of the way. So I'm going to do that now, because this is the main exterior, I can just sew all the way around all three sides. And I'm going to sew this closed with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Don't forget to backstitch it, start and stop. Move that exterior out of the way. You don't want to sew through it at all. And that's so funny that that mark I made, I'm literally stitching right on top of that fold. Can you do measurements enough? I guess they just sort of become easy for you to know exactly what it's going to look like. That probably means I do a lot of sewing. Alrighty. Trim those threads, which are now stuck to me. And then you can check to make sure your pocket is functioning, make sure it can go opened, and you can put stuff inside. It is all good. That is how your exterior pocket will look. Now she has you trim up these edges here, so you can go ahead and do that. But the lining one, again, you'll leave that opening in the bottom edge for turning the bag out through later to close the bottom of the bag, and then we'll close the pocket. So I'm going to go off and I'm going to sew the zipper pocket to my lining piece here, and I'll show you what it looks like when I do come back. But this is what I've chosen for the lining, so I'm switching it up with the materials. So I'll go do that and then I'll come back and we will continue with constructing our bag. I've sewn that pocket into my lining. And as I mentioned with the lining, I left it open at the bottom because that is how we're going to bring the bottom of the bag up through the bag later. So it comes through the pocket to close the bottom of the bag up. So that one has an opening in the bottom of the pocket on the lining and the exterior is all closed off. We're done with these two for now. We can place them to the side. Next, we're going to work on our flap. So you need one of your F pieces and one of your G pieces. And for this, 
we need to make sure our centers are all marked. So I'm actually going to fold this piece in half to create the center crease on the exterior front. I have the backs marked with the centers, but I don't have the front marked. So I've just created that crease just by folding this in half. So now I can see where my center is on the front. And I'm going to do the same thing to my G piece. Just create a crease. Now on your fabric, you need to decide which one you want to use for your lining because we've cut out two flat pieces. So decide which one you want for your lining and which one you want for your exterior. Maybe you're using a different fabric for the lining than you are for the exterior. So make sure you have your lining piece. You want to flip it over and on the flap, there's some marks that you need to make and you can use them from the flat pattern piece. So I've already gone ahead and made those markings. So you can see it there. I've made the mark for where my magnetic snap is going to go. And then what we're going to do is take the washer. So just the washer right now. We're not installing the snaps. And we're going to use the washer, centering it over that mark we made. Draw the lines for the prongs. Now, if you're using something different for a magnetic snap, you'll want to use the manufacturer's instructions so that you can install it. Now I'm going to use my seam ripper and I'm going to cut the slits for those prongs. So those marks I just made, I'm going to cut them. And one extra step I like to do add some fray stop onto the slits. So if you're using a quilting cotton, I'm using a canvas, so I would normally be okay not adding it. Kind of put a lot there, but I'm going to for now. Just going to grab my tissue. Don't want it bleeding too far in. There we go. So I've made the slits and I've added the Fray stop. Now we're going to leave that. We're not going to install them just yet. We're going to leave it until the later steps where we're going to then install them. Now what you need to do is take your G piece and there's a mark you need to make from the bottom up. Again, be very, um, pay a lot of attention to the measurement because you don't want to use the measurement for the small. So if you're making the large, use the measurement for the large. If you're making the small, use the measurement for the small. So just be very careful when you're making that mark that you have it accurate. You want to line up the centers. So these are going right sides together. So your flap is right sides up. Your G piece is wrong sides up. So they are pretty sides touching. And you'll line up the bottom edge of this G piece with that line you made and also centered. Then we'll use some masking tape. I'm using painter's tape here along the bottom edges, side edges. Now I actually just keep reusing this masking or painter's tape until it's not sticky anymore. So I've used this on other projects. And I'm just making sure it's really stuck down so nothing shifts. So that's how it is. So again, G piece goes right sides together with your flap. Once you have that done, we're going to flip it over because when we made all our marks in the beginning, there was a mark you needed to make on the flap that was this rectangle in the center. So I already have that. Now what we're going to do is stitch directly on top of that rectangle. And when I get to those corners, I'm going to do the same thing we did before. I'm going to bring my stitch length to a zero before I turn the corner. And that'll just help me get really nice corners. Back up the other edge. Don't forget to back stitch at start and stop. Now we can remove all the tape. Okay. 
And that's how it looks. So it's all attached now. We've stitched all the way around that box. Now what you need to do is take your fabric safe pen and you need to make marks in the short edges, so little triangles. And she does give a measurement for how far these triangles will go. And then you want to draw a line down the center. And I know I'm freehanding this, so my line's not perfectly straight. That's okay. Spread is in my way. So that's how it'll look when you've drawn those little triangles in the corners. And it looks like a V when you turn it this way, or a, a Y, sorry. Now grab your seam ripper because we need to cut that center line, but also those triangles in the corner. So start with a hole, then use your scissors to cut the rest of the way, stopping when you get to that angle, and then cut all the way into the corner. Careful not to cut your stitches. So take your time when you're in those corners. If you do happen to cut a stitch, don't panic. What you can do is just go back and back stitch. So I'll show you as soon as I get this cut. You'll come back over here. So say it was this corner that I cut my thread in. I'll come back a bit, back stitch, stitch all the way across in this corner, turn and come down that short edge and back around to the bottom and back stitch down here. What that does is it helps recreate that corner and it also locks in the stitches because you're back stitching over top of the previous stitches. So they won't come all undone on you. So that's how that looks. Now we're going to just finger press this. And then we'll push it through to the wrong side and then take it to our iron and give it a really, really good press. So I'm going to use some uh, water. I'm going to spray a little bit of water on this to get it really nice and flat. And that'll help keep it nice and flat. And you want, that's what you want. You want it pressed really good. So I actually did one of my other flaps. So that's how it looks when I've got it all pressed with the water and everything. So that's what you want it to look like, nice and flat. If you can't get yours pressed flat, say you're using a vinyl or something else that can't be pressed with an iron, or you just can't get it pressed really flat, use some double-sided tape to help hold these down, or even some glue if you can use glue. You'll have to let it dry before you start stitching, but anything that you can use to help get these to stay nice and flat and make sure your corners turn out really nice too. Take some time pressing those corners to get them nice and flat. So I'm gonna go press this one and then I'll come back and we will continue with making our flap. So I've pushed that through to the wrong side and given it a really good press. So as you can see, it's nice and flat. And I wanted to note on your other flaps, so I'm just gonna grab the other piece, this one here, we've made the slits for the magnetic snaps. The exterior piece does not have markings or slits. Well, it does have the marking here. I made it because I didn't know which one I would use for my lining flap. Anyways, you're not cutting holes in this one for your magnetic snap. So only one has the holes cut for the magnetic snap. I'm going to say that one more time so that we don't have anybody cutting any holes in their exterior. The exterior side of your flap does not have holes for the magnetic snap. Only one piece of your magnet of your flap will have the slits for the magnetic snaps. So only one. So now we need to install those magnetic snaps. So I'm just going to grab everything I use for installing magnetic snaps. And you're going to take your scrap pieces of interfacing and make the slits the same way we did for the holes here on the flap. And then we need to take the female portion of our magnetic snaps and we need to install those on our flap. Ooh. So what we'll do, and again, if you have different snaps, use your, magnetic, uh, your manufacturer's instructions for installing them. So we're going to push the prongs through those slits that we made. Then our piece of Decoville Heavy, then our washer. Then I'm going to fold my prongs in. And the reason I do this is I just feel like it's more secure because it's hugging the fabric. Just a personal preference. I've had some fallout on me before, and then I started doing this, and I haven't had any issues since I started installing them this way. So, again, push the prongs through so your magnetic snap is on the right side your scrap of interfacing, then the washer. 
And I just use these pliers because I find it's easier for my hands. So now we're going to put a piece of tape over top of the prongs. And this just acts as a barrier to prevent those prongs from rubbing on the other side of the material, but it also helps hold them in place. I find that it just sort of secures them a little bit more, if that makes sense. Because the tape is holding them in place. And that's how it looks from the right side. We have our magnetic snaps installed. Now we need to take the other flat piece. So if you haven't already, Follow the same steps to make this window here in your flap, and that's where your handle is going to come up through. So follow the same steps for attaching your flap opening facing for the second piece. The only thing you're not doing again is adding magnetic snaps. You're going to line up all the edges, clip it in place, So clip it all the way around. And then we're going to sew all the way around this entire flap using the seam allowance given in the pattern. I'm also going to clip together the center area just to make sure nothing shifts on me and make sure it stays nicely lined up. Now we're going to sew all the way around, but leave the top edge unsewn. So we can turn the flap right sides out. And we're not sewing this center section. I'm just clipping this to help hold it in place while I sew everything else so this doesn't shift on me. So all we're doing is sewing down one side. So all the way down the side, go around the curve, all the way across the bottom, around that curve again, and back up the other side. That's it for this. And don't forget to backstitch at start and stop. And again, use the seam allowance given in the pattern. And if your stitch length has been changed, return it back to the length you use for constructing your bags. Another tip, if you have a hard time sewing curves, a couple of things you can do is draw the seam allowance on your curve and stitch directly on top of that seam allowance or take it one stitch at a time. So you'll go one stitch, lift your presser foot so your needle is down, you're lifting your presser foot, pivot it a bit, presser foot down, take a stitch, needle down, presser foot up, pivot your fabric a little bit more, take one stitch. Keep doing that all the way around that curve till you get to the end. Now I'm going to trim the curves as mentioned in the pattern. And I'm using my pinking shears for this, just so I don't have to make little notches. And then we're going to trim the seam allowance along the straight edges. Careful not to clip any stitches. If you do, don't panic. Just go back over, as I was mentioning previously, and stitch back over them. Don't forget to back stitch at start and stop over top of previous stitching. Oops. All right, so remove the clips that you have. We're going to turn this. So it is right sides out and we're turning it through the top opening right sides out
I'm going to use a turning tool to help get those corners pushed or those curves pushed out nicely. Corners, I guess, in, in, a, in a way. And I'm just using my turning tool to push my seams as well, but I want my curves to be really nice. So I'm taking my time to focus on the curves. So I'm going to take this to my iron and give it a really good press. However, I'm going to be careful when I'm pressing near my magnetic snaps because I don't want to demagnetize them. So I'm going to go get Go take this to my iron, give everywhere a really nice, good press so it's nice and crisp, and then we'll come back and we'll top stitch. That's all pressed as nicely as it can be. Now I'm going to clip this center area again all together, lining everything up. Take your time at this part. You want everything to be nice because this will be seen when the bag is completed. So that's all clipped together. Now we're going to top stitch around this opening all the way around. Don't back stitch again. Leave long thread tails and then we're going to pull them through and tie them off. So I'll show you how to do that. All this extra work, I promise, is truly worth it. My magnetic snap is catching on my machine. I couldn't figure out what was going on there. See how it's sticking? So I'm keeping the clips on until I get to where they are or as close to them as I can get. And then I remove it. Magnetic snap is strong. The force is strong with that one. Just taking my time to make sure that I keep everything as nicely lined up as I can. There's my thread tails. I don't want to stitch over these, so I'm just moving them out of the way. And I'm back where I started. Lift my needle up. Long thread tails. Now, what we're going to do here, you need a needle. So I'm just going to grab one out. And we're going to pull these through between the layers here so that we don't have any back stitching. So you're going to thread your needle and pull them through. Pull them through together if you can get them threaded onto the needle together. I can't believe I did that together. And I should have started at the top. So I'm just going to unpick my stitches, a few stitches to come back over to the top because I started at the bottom. I meant to start at the top, but I started at the bottom. And if you've done this, you can do the same thing. So just unpick some of your stitches. The nice thing is, is we are pulling these through to the back. So I'm going to go do this. I think I have to unpick them all. That's a big boo-boo on my end. So you have to start at the top of the opening when you're stitching. 
and make sure you start at the top, don't backstitch, go all the way around, and we're gonna leave long thread tails, and you want those long thread tails to be here at the top where the opening is of the flap so that we can pull them through and tie them off. So I'm going to unpick all this top stitching. It's gonna take me a little bit of time. I'm going to re-top stitch that whole opening, and then I'll come back and all will be good, and we'll be able to continue on. All right, so back to what I was saying. You need to start when you top stitch this opening at the top so that your threads are at the top. You can thread them through and be able to open this up to get the needle through. So I've got that all restitched all the way around. So you can see I've stitched all the way around on both sides and it looks beautiful. Another thing that I forgot that I wanted to mention as a suggestion, if you don't want to use clips around here and you really want to make sure it stays in place, what you can do is use some double-sided tape around that edge, around these edges here to help hold it together. Now you need to grab your needle and you need to thread the threads through the eye of the needle. And then we're going to push it through where your stitching is and come through the inside. And up through the middle here. Oops. Seems like one of mine is wrapped funny. Hang on, I'm gonna redo this. All right. So I'm going in where that stitching is, so where one of the stitches are, I'm just going in through and to the center, and I'm going to pull this between the two layers, so between the two facing layers, just like that. Pull it up through. So there's one side done. And just make sure it looks nice and neat. Then we're going to do that for the second side. So thread them and then you'll pull them through between the layers and you wanna go between the layers where the other ones are so that you can knot them together. So through where the stitching is, I'm going right where the stitching is through to the center here. So you can see I'm coming between the layers of facing. And now I'm going to give those a pull. And now they're both there, so I'm going to grab the pairs and I'm going to knot them so they don't come back through. And this is just hiding all that back stitching and all the threads and everything. We don't have to have to have any back stitching at all. This just makes it seamless. And I'm not going to be concerned about trimming these threads because they're going to be tucked inside, so I'll just leave them. You can trim them if you'd like. Just like that. I am going to trim where my flap is fraying a bit though, just because I don't want those poking out on me later. And there you have it. Your flap is all complete. We've pulled the threads through to the wrong side, so you can't see them at all here. Sorry, I have to find where the angle is of the camera. So you can't see any of that stitching or back stitching at all, and you don't know where we've pulled the threads through to the wrong side because we've tucked them in and pulled it off, and it looks awesome. So there you go, that's how it'll look. And take your time when you're top stitching, take your time with this, because as I said, all those stitches will be seen later in the pattern. So the next thing and the final thing we need to do on the flap is top stitch all around these edges of the flap. So I'm going to do that and you can back stitch here. So we're going to go down the side, around the curve, across the bottom, around the curve, up the other side and across the top as well. And if you want, you can place some clips along the top just to help hold it in place. So use your favorite top stitch length and stitch all around the flap. Take your time on the curves.
trim all your threads. You don't want them to peekaboo on you later. And there you have it. Your flap is finally complete. We've top stitched, we've made the openings, we've added our magnetic snaps, we have a beautiful flap. Set your flap to the side for now. So I'm just going to put this over here. We need to grab one of our, or sorry, we need to grab our, not one, there is only one, our main exterior slip pocket piece. So this is piece C, slip pocket. So I wrote it on here. And there are some marks that you need to make for the slip pocket for the magnetic snaps. Now, I've marked the T where the top is, and I did have magnetic snap markings change, so I have to scratch it out and add the new ones. But I've marked where the top is, and I've gone ahead and already made my marks. And those marks will be on your pattern piece, so you'll want to refer to that for where the markings are. Once you have those markings made, you need to take your washer and use the magnetic snap washer to mark the prongs. Same thing we did before, we'll cut the slits. Now I don't need to use any um, fray stop on this because it's the vinyl and I'm not worried about the vinyl ripping or anything. So once you have those slits made, we're then going to take our slip pocket lining and place it right sides together. So your exterior is right sides up, your slip pocket lining is right sides down. So they're pretty sides touching. Clip it along the top edge. And then we're going to sew that top edge with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Don't forget to return your stitch length back to the length you use for stitching a bag together. Trim all your threads. Then we're going to Turn the layers so they are wrong sides together. And I like to place a few clips at the bottom here just to really help hold it together. And then I'm going to use my turning tool right here to run it along this top edge here and make sure I get it pressed nice. Another thing I will do is I will use some clips along the top edge. All right. And then we're going to top stitch the, or sorry, we're not going to top stitch yet. Oh, no, we are. We're top stitching this top edge. Sorry, I'm all confused. So we're going to top stitch this top edge using the seam allowance given in the pattern. I jumped ahead of a step there on you, sorry about that. So top stitch along your top edge here. So again, using your favorite top stitch length. Some black on my nail, on my finger. I think it's from my machine. To wipe my finger because there's something I think it's oil from my machine somewhere use some hand sanitizer to make sure it's off yeah that was weird oh I see it it's on my lever here 
There we go. I just don't want that getting on any of my bag. Trim your threads. And then what we're going to do is remove these clips at the bottom. We're going to open this back up and we're going to install the male portions of our magnetic snap. So the same way we installed the female, we'll install the male. <clears throat> so push the prongs through the slits you made, through the slits in your Decoville Heavy, and then your washer. Fold it over. Repeat for the second. And then I'm going to also add my tape over top. And this tape I actually get at the dollar store in case you're wondering and I buy white just because it blends with everything but my dollar store has all sorts of colors there's like red and green and blue so you could even use those if you wanted if you're using a darker material so it won't show through there we go and that's how it looks with the magnetic snaps installed now we need to take this piece and the remaining exterior so this one here so find where the top is and we're going to place the slip pocket so that it is right sides up against the right side of the main exterior so this main exterior is the one that has nothing on it as you can see so take it have it facing right sides up place your slip pocket right sides up on top lining up the bottom and side edges clip it together Sorry, I know I flip it upside down on you, but it's just how I s makes it easy so I can see it. But I'll flip it back around so you can see how I've pinned it. So there you go. So that's how it looks when it's pinned and you've got it so it's like that. Then you can take your flap. You can even see how your flap's going to look when you snap it together. Why can't I do this? There you go. So how it looks when it's snapped together. The one side snapped together nice. Oh, there we go. There we go. One side snapped together nicely and the other side didn't want to. So now what we're going to do is we're going to baste these three edges together all the way around. And you can use your top stitch length for this because it's just basting. It's only holding those pieces together. So what I'm doing is I'm going to start at the top edges of both sides just so that I don't get any shifting when I go to stitch the bottom. I find sometimes when I come back up one side, it shifts on me. So this just prevents the shifting. Another thing you can do is start in the center and from the center out. So each side, if you prefer, Trying to trim all my threads. There's a lot this time. Alrighty. So that's how it looks. Now we need to take our bottom piece. So bottom piece E. Just want to make sure I'm giving you the right. Yes, bottom piece E. And we're going to keep this piece so that it is right sides up and we're going to lay the bottom piece so it is right sides together. So you're looking at the wrong side of your bottom piece. Clip it along the bottom long edge. And 
And then we'll sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Now, don't forget to return your stitch length back to the length you use for constructing a bag. Trimming all my threads, just like that. Now we're going to take this and we're going to pull the bottom piece down so that the seam allowance is flattened underneath the bottom. So your seam allowance, when I flip it this way, you see it's going down. So all this bulk is down towards the base of our bag. We're going to top stitch through all these layers using the seam allowance given in the pattern. still think we should play a game for how many times I say seam allowance given in the pattern. It's kind of funny. So I've top stitched through all those layers, returned my, steam, my stitch length back to the length I use when I make my bags. Now we're going to put this to the side because we're going to work on the top band pieces. So just put that to the side for now and grab one of your exterior top band B. So there is two of them, but just one for now is what we need. Well, you do need both actually. There are some markings that you need to make. So you'll want to place those markings now, including your center marks if you haven't done that already. So if you don't have those center marks marked, go ahead and do that. And then there's markings for the placement of your handles that you need to make as well. So you'll want to make those as well. And then we'll grab our handles. So put one of your B pieces to the side, grab your handle, and you're going to place it at that mark given in the pattern. So you're going to place it there clip it in place and then you want to twist it your handle so that it stays flat or straight and not twisted and you get a nice curve of your handle see how it curves up here and you're lining it up with that mark you made now we can also check this to see if it looks correct. When you put these on, this is how you can just do a double check to see, does this look correct as what's in the pattern? And mine does, so I'm okay. If not, before you stitch it, you wanna move this. So I know that I've placed them to the inside of the line. So there's my mark, the inside of the line. So they go in towards the center. I'm going to repeat that for the second one. So again, that's the other thing you need to decide. Do you want this seam where it's folded? So you see this seam here where we folded it in or the nice folded edge pointing out. I actually want my nice folded edge pointing out and I don't know if I did it on that one. I can't tell, I might have to switch it. But I like it pointing out rather than the other edge. Excuse me, sorry. The dust again from the chalk strikes again. All right, so I have it so that my handle, the seam is going on the outside when the handle is, or it goes inside, the seams are on the inside here and the outside is the nice edge. So now that you have that there, you can baste the handles to the top exterior piece. And then you can also grab your connectors and place them right beside the handles as you're stitching it on one side. So as I'm stitching, I'm going to lift up my presser foot and this is going to go right beside the handle. So just like that, and I'll show you when I get this done. And this is just so that I don't have to break any stitches, I'm just continuously stitching. So just like that, I've placed it right beside it and stitched it in place. 
and make sure you're using the right connector for the right right one because remember we have connectors for the bottom so you want to make sure you're using the connectors for the top so on to the next one so I'm going to place my connector right beside my handle but it's all nicely lined up. Trim my thread. You can see this handle has a weird thread here that I got to get rid of. There we go. That's how that one looks. Now I'll do this one. So there's only connectors to go on one top band. So we're only doing connectors on one top band. So that's how the two tops look. One with connectors and one without connectors. Now you're going to take the main exterior with the slip pocket and take the top band, the one with just the handles, and you're going to place it so it is right sides together with this top edge of your exterior. So not at the bottom where the base is, at the top here. And you're going to line up these top long edges, pin it in place, or in my case, clip it in place. And then we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. So again, you're clipping it so it is right sides together. So exterior is right sides up, band is right sides down, so pretty sides touching. And then we will sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And where that handle is, I'm just going to back stitch over it once just to really help secure that in place because the handles do take a lot of stress. Now we need to pull the exterior band up and turn the seam allowance down towards the main exterior. So again, it's up and the seam allowance here is pointing down towards my exterior. So all that bulk is going down towards my exterior. And then we will top stitch this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And again, my handles are pointing up, my top band is up, and here's the, the seam that I'm going to be stitching, which is underneath my handles. So stitch all the way across. Return your stitch length back to the length you use for stitching your bag. Move this off to the side for now and grab back out your exterior with the zipper pocket on it. So this one here, there are some marks that you need to make and I already had them so I'm just gonna draw them so they're a little bit clearer. For where we're going to place our bottom connectors. So grab those bottom connectors and use the measurements given in the pattern for where you're going to place those marks. So there's my mark there and there's my mark there. And we're going to place these at the marks given. And they're going to the inside again of the mark. Clip it in place. And then we will baste these together using the seam allowance given in the pattern.
I'm just going to dust off with the chalk. Usually when the bag, as I'm constructing a bag, I'll have a little wet towel just to sort of use when I'm doing this without videos. And I just wipe it off. All right, so that's how that looks so far. Now we need to take that exterior that we've attached our base to, the one with the slip pocket, lay it right sides up, and then lay this one that we had just attached those connectors to right sides together and clip it together along the bottom edges. And then we'll sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And I'm just making sure that my stitch length was where it needed to be. And I'm going to back stitch again over where those connectors are. I know we're going to take care of those in the next step, but I just really wanted to make sure. That they're nice and secure. Next, we will pull this back exterior down and then have the seam allowance towards the bottom. So you're going to flip it, so the same thing. So now these connectors are pointing up towards the lining, the exterior back panel. And I'm going to top stitch. So you can see my seam allowance is going towards my bottom panel. And I'm going to top stitch this seam allowance. Now, if you're worried that there's quite a bit of bulk here and your machine won't be able to stitch through everything, try a walking foot or a bigger and a bigger needle or just a bigger needle. Sometimes that helps get through the bulk, but a walking foot can help, a humper jumper, anything like that can help. Now that's how that looks. So the next thing we need to do is take our exterior and fold it in half so it is wrong sides together and you want to fold it in half wrong sides together as she explains in the pattern because then when you have the bag filled so I'll read what Andrea has wrote the reason we need to have the connectors folded back before punching holes is because we need to accommodate the curve of the side pieces and the entire bag. If we don't fold the entire bag and the connectors before punching the holes, once the bag is done, the connectors will pull in the ex on the exterior underneath them and it will bend inwards. So now we need to have this folded like this, just like that. And I'm just going to add some clips and they're wrong sides together right now. You're going to pull the backpack connectors towards the back exterior and punch holes at the marked spots on all the way through the connectors and the back exterior. So the marked spots, you will use those measurements. So I need to go off camera to do that. I need to use my ruler and make the mark for the measurements. So I'm going to go do that and then I'll come back. I'll have my rivets installed and I will have everything all done and we will be able to move on. So use the measurements given in the pattern to mark those, those, make those marks. If you don't have rivets, you can sew a little box with an X inside to help hold this in place. Whatever you choose to do, just make sure you fold this in half first so that you don't have that pulling. So I'm going to go off camera, I'm going to make the marks for my holes, punch my holes and install my rivets and then I'll come back and we will continue on. So I've installed those rivets at the measurements and marks given in the pattern. So here they are, they're all installed. And again, you could make the marks and then just sew a little box here. Keep it folded in half though, so that you keep it so that it doesn't pull when you go to attach the back, when we go to attach the sides and everything. So it won't pull on the bottom of the bag. Now we need to take this and attach the top band. So the final top band with the connectors and the handle. So lay it so that your back piece is right sides up and your top band goes right sides down. So your handle right now is going to be pointing towards the base of the bag. 
So make sure you have everything pointing towards the face of the bag, your connectors as well, all towards the base of the bag. And then we're going to clip it in place and sew this using the seam allowance given in the pattern all the way across. Make sure you're at your stitch length that you like to use for constructing a bag. And when I get to where the constructors, a uh, con connector, sorry, and handle is, again, I'm going to do the same thing I did previously and backstitch over them just for that extra security. Trim all your threads. I can't see any. Then we're going to take this and we're going to place or press our seam so it goes down towards the main panel. So same thing we did previously, you want all that, all that bulk to go down towards your main panel and we're going to top stitch under the handle and strap connectors using your favorite seam allowance for top stitching. And as I was mentioning before, if you're worried about your machine going through all that bulk, try the walking foot, a humper jumper, and even a bigger needle. Oftentimes, one of those or all of them help. I've even um, used my seam whacker and whacked my seams to really flatten them so that I don't have any of that extra bulk. It sort of flattens it all together. So that's how it looks when it's top stitched. Now we need to make marks on these handles and connectors here on both sides. So there's a measurement that you need to make from the bottom, from the bottom of this seam. So right where this seam is, or I guess the top of the seam, up on the handles, connectors, and on the front handles as well. So I'm going to go off camera. I'm going to make those marks and then I'll come back and my rivets will be in place and everything will look really pretty and we can continue on. Now, if you do not have rivets or Chicago screws, you can use that mark to make, so to sew little boxes with X's. So sew up to that mark you make. So say the mark is here, you'll sew up to that mark across, back down the other side, and then across the bottom, and then sew an X in the middle of that box. And that'll help give that that extra security that the rivet is giving it that you don't have because you don't have rivets. So you can sew a box with an X. Again, go up to where that mark is made and then back down. So I'm going to go install all my rivets and then I will be back and we will continue on. Now all my rivets are installed on my handles and connectors. So you can see here I've installed them on the handles and the connectors on both sides. And again, if you don't have those rivets or Chicago screws, sew a box going only up to where that mark is for where we place our rivets. We're going to place this to the side for now. We're going to move on to making our, or working on our sides. And this is where you need to decide if you're doing option one, option two, option three. So option one is side cinched with magnetic snaps. Option two will leave these open flat and option three is sides open with added side connectors. So you can carry this as a shoulder bag or a crossbody bag. So option one is what I'm doing, which is the, the sides are cinched with magnetic snaps. So we need to make the marks for the magnetic snaps. So I had a little bit of a technical issue and my microphone stopped working while I was trying to record the tutorial. So I had to go back and find out where my microphone stopped recording and it stopped while I was trying to show you how to do the magnetic snaps. So we're going to start back at that spot. So with the magnetic snaps, if that's the option you're choosing to do, you need to take your washer and you need to make the marks for the prongs as we did with the flap. Now there's a measurement on your pattern piece that you'll need to make and you'll want to make that on your side piece. Then you'll take your washer and you'll use that to mark the prongs. So you'll just mark slits, the lines where the slits will be cut on both sides. And then you can take your seam ripper 
and you can cut those slits. Now I've already cut my slits because as I mentioned, my microphone stopped working, but I'm going to still show you how to do it. And a little technique that I like to do or a tip that I want to show you is if you're worried when you're pushing your seam ripper through your vinyl that you're going to accidentally go too far, what you can do is take your pin and place it or push it through right at the top of the line that you made for your prong. So you put it right at the top. Then you're gonna come out on the other side, right at the top. So in and out, right at that top of those lines that you drew, just like that. And then when you're pushing your seam ripper through, what happens is it hits that needle or the pin and that acts as a guard to stop it from you pushing too far. Because sometimes, you know, we, we push on our seam ripper and we don't realize exactly how hard we're pushing and we end up pushing it so that it goes too far and it rips our fabric. It's happened to me a few times. So now I do the little pin trick whenever I can, especially when I'm using vinyl because I really don't want to rip my vinyl that much. So then, that is how you're going to make the slits. So you'll cut all the slits for the prong. So you'll have the prong slits. You can also cut the slits for the prongs in your interfacings if you want to do that now as well, which I will. And I'm going to need to grab a couple more pieces of Decoville for the other side. So I'm just going to mark the prongs. Now your magnetic snaps again, maybe a little bit different than mine and you'll want to follow your manufacturer's instructions for installing them into your bag. And with this, I'm not super concerned if I rip it too far, like I just did there accidentally. All right, so I'm just going to tuck these away. We're not installing the magnetic snaps just yet, so if this is the option you were doing, just leave your magnetic snaps off to the side, don't install them yet. Now, if you're doing option three with the side connector here, so we're going to pretend my clip is a side connector. You're going to have it folded the way I showed you with the D-ring and everything already attached to it. There's a measurement given in the pattern for where you're going to place your D-ring connector. And you're going to find that placement and then you're going to place it down. You can use some masking tape or washing ta washi tape to help hold it in place. You can even put a little bit of double-sided tape on the back, but if you want to conserve some of your double-sided tape, because we do use a lot, you can just use washi tape or masking tape. Those both work really well. You'll place it at the placement that's given in the pattern. And then just as we did with our overlays, we're going to stitch all the way around, leaving long tails at start and stop, and then pull them through to the back. So you'll stitch all the way around with the measurements given in the pattern. And then once you pull your tails through, you'll tie them off and then you'll add a rivet at the top. So say this is the top here where this clip is right up here, just under your D ring, you'll add a rivet. If you don't have any rivets or Chicago screws, you can just continue sewing right up close to the hardware as you can get. And then you can even sew a little box or a little, sorry, X inside the box to give it some more security. That's if you don't have rivets or Chicago screws. It's just an extra option just for some extra strength. So instead of just sewing as given in the instructions, you'll sew right up as close to the hardware as you can get. Then once you have that all done, you're ready to move on. And as I mentioned, my video camera stopped recording, or not my video camera, sorry, my um, microphone stopped recording the sound. So I had had one side already sewn. Thankfully, I didn't get to the other side yet, so I can still show you how to do it. So you're going to have your center marks on your side panel here, on side panel, I just wanna see what number this is, D, and you're going to have your uh, center marks on your base. So you want to take that center mark that's on the bottom of your side panel and the bottom is the side with the curve here and you want to line it up with the center mark on your base. We're going to clip it together at that center mark and then add a couple clips around. Now Andrea does say that if you want to ensure that this doesn't shift on you and you want to make sure everything stays in place, adding some staples does help. I've never used this method before just simply because I don't have a stapler and I'm always nervous about hitting them, but I've never felt like I've needed it. However, if you feel like using a stapler, you can definitely do that. You can use, if you're using quilting cotton for this or a canvas, depending on your canvas, of course, you can use some pins to help hold everything in place. 
When I'm sewing a curve, I don't remove my clips until my presser foot touches them. This just ensures that nothing shifts on me while I'm sewing. So I'm just going to continue clipping. So right now I've clipped the tops. So I have the top corners clipped and the bottom center mark. And now I'm just going to ease the fabric the rest of the way through. And what that means is I'm just going to help it go around the curve, the, all the way around, getting it nice and smooth without any puckers. I was so happy that I noticed that the cam uh, the microphone stopped recording because I would have went much further in the tutorial and that would have been bad news for me. I was just happy I didn't have the second side sewn. So I'm just going all the way around and if you have everything lined up, it should fit perfectly for you. Just make sure the raw edges line up. Now, another thing I like to do is make small snips in the curves within the seam allowance. And I just like doing this because I find that it helps open up those curves, making it easier to sew while you're going around that curve. You don't have to do this, but I just like it. Like I said, I just find it opens it up. And by opening it up, what I mean is your fabric's like this right now. When you make the snip, it opens it up. And then as you're going around the curve, all that opens up, helping you get that nice and flat, the fabric all around there. So that's why I like making those snips. It just helps that little extra bit. And I will get out my extension table, which I already have out because I've already sewn the one side. And another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to a smaller foot. So I'm going to use my zipper foot because that'll help us get that curve really nice. And you don't have such a wide foot pushing your fabric. So the wider part of the foot, the foot's wider, sorry. And it'll sort of push on the fabric and make things shift on you, if that makes sense. So I am going to switch to a smaller presser foot. right here. And so what I mean by the fabric pushing on you is I find sometimes when I'm coming around the curve, my presser foot is pushing down, but it's pushing this fabric so that it's pushing it this way. And then the fabric underneath tends to shift on me. So I just like having the smaller foot. Andrea does mention this in the pattern. So having the smaller foot on a tight curve like that, she just likes having that. So we're going to do that. Now we're going to start sewing at the top using the seam allowance given in the pattern. I've just got to move my foot pedal a little bit closer. All right, so back stitch at start and stop. And the other thing too is, is your interfacing is cut smaller so it's kept out of the seam allowance, which means with the smaller foot, my presser foot is going to be right against it, not on it. And just take your time making sure you keep everything nice and flat. curve so I'm just going to lift up my bag I know it's kind of hiding what I'm doing here but I've just got my bag lifted up to get around that curve and again remember I'm not moving oops I'm not moving my clips until I get to that clip even though some clips just fell off on me here so I'm not removing any clips until my presser foot touches that clip and what that does is that just helps ensure my fabrics don't shift on me while I'm sewing Some of my clips are trying to escape. All 
Now just make sure that your pocket isn't in the way underneath here. This zipper pocket, if that's the side that you're sewing right now. Make sure your handles aren't underneath as well. And for some extra security, you can sew around a second time. But first, I'm just going to look inside and see how it looks here. And I'm just going to feel, because if there's any puckers or anything, you want to fix that now. Or if your fabric shifted, if your presser foot shifted a little bit, which mine did right here. So I'm just going to unpick that a little bit. I can see that it went, my stitching sort of went like this, probably while I was pushing off a clip. I probably shifted. So I'm just going to unpick these stitches and I'm going to add a clip there. And this is just how I'm going to get a really nice curve. There we go. Just open it up. And then I'm just gonna put a clip back there, just so I know where that area is, so I know to be extra cautious there as I'm coming around that curve. All right, so I'm going to sew a second row of stitching and this is just for strength. And it's going to be right beside the first set of stitches. It's also good to go over a second time because as I was mentioning, any areas where you sort of went off, like I just did, you can unpick it, but if it's not too bad and you went off and your curve isn't too bad, you don't have to unpick it. You can just sort of sew and make it nicer. So just keep sewing all the way around that curve. And then here's where I got a little wonky. So I want to connect all those stitches again. And I will go back over in this area once I'm done sewing a second time, just because that area doesn't have that second set of stitching. So back to where that stitching is. Let me see. right there. So I'm going to back stitch over it. And I'm just going back over giving there a second row of stitches here in that area that I unpicked. And that's just for extra strength. So you can see nothing shifted on me because I kept my clips all the way through and I didn't remove my clips until my presser foot touched them. Now let's see what we need to do. So now we're going to install our magnetic snaps. So you need to install a female part so that it is towards the ex front exterior and the male will be towards the back. So you'll look at the front of your bag. The front of your bag is where the slip pocket is going to be because that's where the flap will come over and close. So we will grab our magnetic snaps. <clears throat> Excuse me. And remember, a female snap, the female portion of the snap will go towards the front and the male will go towards the back. So here's the front of my bag and I'm putting my female snap through just pushing it through the prong, the prong slits I made there earlier, adding my Decoville Heavy, and then my washer. And then my trusty pliers. And then I will add the male half on this side. And the male half again goes towards the back of the bag 
So I'm just trying to push the prongs through the slits I made. So there you go, I've got the prongs through. Add my interfacing, add my washer. And now what I like to do is add some tape on the tapes right here. Add some tape. Just over top of the prongs. And again, as I mentioned previously, this is just a personal preference. go and that's how it looks when you've installed your prongs so I'm just gonna go off camera I'm going to stall the prongs on the other side and also cut two more pieces of deco bale heavy because I didn't have enough and then I'll come back and we will continue on with constructing our bag so I've gotten all my magnetic snaps installed and if you snap them together on the sides and I know it looks a little bit funny because it's inside out right now but that's how it'll look when they snap together on the side. So you can imagine that these are going to go in towards the inside of the bag. Put that to the side for now. We need to grab our lining slip pocket L piece, which will look like this. So you should have it marked with an L and your top where your top is. Now we're going to take this and we're going to place it right sides up and we're going to bring the bottom edge up to meet the top edge right sides together. You'll clip it in place. And then we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And make sure the bottom edge comes up towards where the top edge is. That's why it's very important that you mark a T. You're folding this in half horizontally. Now I'm going to switch my presser foot again back to my other foot. that and now we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern and you're sewing all the way across that top pinned edge then we're going to clip our threads and turn this right sides out. So just reach through the tube and pull it, just like that. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi. Hi. I don't know if you can hear Buddy calling to me. Yeah. So there it is. Now, once we do that, we need to take this to our iron if you're using materials that you can press and press this so it's nice and flat here. So I'm going to take this to my iron and give it a really good press, then I'll come back and we will top stitch it and add it into our bag. So I've given this a really good press. Now we need to top stitch this top edge here. So you'll top stitch your top edge and you can choose what edge you want to top stitch. Now I'm going to top stitch the edge that doesn't have the seam, just so that when it's when I look down into the bag, I don't see that seam there. And I'm also flipping my fabrics around so I know my fabric was directional. So this keeps it so that it's still in the correct position or correct orientation, sorry. Hi. Thank you. Now on our, <laughs> on our, yes, shake a paw. On our lining, we need to grab our remaining lining piece. And there, she's currently kissing me. And there are some marks you need to make for your placement of your slip pocket. So on the pattern piece, there are marks for your <laughs> slip pocket. So you can see I've made them here. You can see I've made my marks already. So there's one, and there's the second one. So I've already made my slip pocket placement marks, which means 
I know where this is going to need to be placed, but you'll want to refer to the pattern for where that measurement is. So now I'm going to take my slip pocket and I'm going to line it up with those marks and I'm going to clip it. Can I take this? I'm going to clip it in place along the side edges. So all along the side edges. Now we're going to top stitch across the bottom edge of the slip pocket right now. So just across the bottom side, bottom edge. And I'm using a stitch length that's between the length I use for top stitching and the length I use for stitching a bag together. That's just a personal preference. So just like that. Now what we need to do is we need to use the center mark as our guide for drawing the vertical line down the center of the slip pocket. So I need to go off camera because I need to use my ruler because I can see where my center fold line is here, but I want to make sure I follow it exactly. So I'm going to go off camera, I'm going to use my ruler, make the mark, and then I'll come back and I'll show you how we will stitch this. So I drew that center line, now we're going to use this center line as a marking for where we're going to stitch. So we'll start on one edge, go down, across the bottom, up beside that line we drew, pivot at the top, go back down the other side of that middle line, across the bottom, and back up again. And you'll do that all the way through the whole slip pocket. So starting at the top, back stitch. Don't forget to back stitch. And I'm going to go right to where I stitched across the bottom previously. And now I'm going up the center. Then I'm going to come across and then back down the other side. I'm just going to cut that thread because it keeps getting stuck on things. So back down the other side and again I'm using the measurement given in the pattern for that. Across the bottom and then up the other side. And what we've done here is created a slip pocket that is divided. So we have two slip pockets that are divided. Now you can add a rivet here if you want an optional rivet. I will. I'll go off camera and add my rivet. She sees her sister right now and she's gearing up to go run after her. Sorry. So I'm going to go add my rivet but I'm also going to use my iron to get rid of this line that I made here. So I'll add a rivet and then I will come back and we will continue on. All right so I've installed that rivet. Now we are ready to continue on making our interior. So finishing it. So that's how it looks with the rivet. And again, if you don't have rivets, you don't need to install those. So taking this piece we just worked on and our interior top band eye piece, we need to place them right sides together. So lay your lining with the slip pocket right sides up. Make sure the opening of the slip pocket is at the top so you have it top up here. Take the eye piece, interior top band, and place it right sides together with the top edge of the lining. Line up that top edge. Shake a paw, good girl. Clip it all the way across the top. And then we're going to sew this here with the seam allowance given in the pattern. So don't forget to return your stitch length back to the length you use for stitching a bag together. Then we're going to 
pull the interior up and turn the seam allowances towards it and flatten the seam with your finger. You can also take this to your iron and press it with your iron, but just like that. And now we're going to top stitch across the band here. So across the top band using the seam allowance given in the pattern. So I've just finger pressed that. You can definitely take it to your iron and press it if you want a really good crisp, crisp press. Or use your seam roller if you have one. I always forget. I always forget that I have that. So there we go. That's pressed and top stitch. Now we're going to repeat that all for the second main lining, the one with the zipper pocket. So place the zipper pocket so that the lining is facing up. So you're looking at your overlay. Press the top band or place the top band so it is right sides together, so it's pretty sides touching. Clip it all the way across. And then sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Don't forget to return your stitch length back to the length you use for stitching a bag together. Press the seam allowance up. And top stitch across the top edge. Trim any threads. And there we have it. Second one is complete. Now we need to take the two main lining pieces and we need to place them so they are right sides together so pretty sides touching and clip the sides together pay special attention to this area where your interior top band meets your main lining and add a clip there you want that to line up so it looks like one consistent row or line of the band so you want it to look like it is all one piece. So line that up. And don't forget to line up your quarters, corners, sorry. And then we will sew the sides, just the sides, using the seam allowance given in the pattern. So when I get up to this area where the top interior band is, I'm going to make sure that I hold it in place. You can also use a pin, but you want it to look like that continuous piece. So right here, there we go. So I've sewn them right sides together. So when we look inside, if I can get it open, that's how it looks so far. I'm just going to clean up these clips. So they're not in my way. All right, now you can trim the sides and I'm going to use pinking shears, but leave the top band untrimmed. So you can see what I mean here. I trimmed it so that it, the top band is not trimmed. And I'm using my pinking shears. You can just use regular scissors if you want. Whatever gets the job done. So just like that. I just like pinking shears because I find it helps with the fraying. Now, put this to the side. We're going to take our interior back and we're going to add the flap so to do that 
we need to find the center mark of the flap. So fold it in half. And this is the exterior. I'm just trying to make sure I'm marking the right side. And I'm just going to mark within my seam allowance. There we go. Now we need to take the handles and push them down inside the bag. So make sure your handles are down inside the bag. You're going to take your flap and place it inside the bag. So inside the exterior. So my handles are pushed down and I'm placing it inside the exterior. And your magnetic snaps are going to be facing the front part of the bag. So the, so the magnetic snaps right now are facing towards this front part. So the part that's against the back of the bag is the front of the flap base essentially right now. So line up the center mark on your flap. Oops, clip it together. I'm going to pick that up. And then continue clipping all the way across. And one more time, when you look inside, you can see my magnetic snaps. They're facing towards the front of my bag, which is where my slip pocket is. So you could clip the snaps together right now. We're not going to, of course, but you could. So I'm just clipping all the way across the flap. And now we're going to sew this. So I've lined up the top edge of the flap all the way across. I've lined up the center marks so it looks like this. Now we're going to sew this to the back exterior using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And I can feel those D-rings, so I'm just making sure they're pointing down as well because I don't want them dangling up and getting hit. My tape is kind of lifted off, so I'm going to press it down again. There we go. So now the flap is attached. Now we need to take our lining and you need to turn it right sides out. And then we're going to place the lining inside the exterior. Now, when we do that, first of all, there's a thread here I need to cut. When we do that, we need to make sure the interior zipper pocket is on the same side as the flap. So here's our flap, interior zipper pocket, same side as the flap. And I don't have center marks on this. I just realized as I was pushing it in. So I'm going to make those right now. So I'm just going to fold it in half. Take that out of my mouth so you can understand what I'm saying. I'm just lining up the center creases, folding it in half, pressing with my finger and then marking crease. This is very important to make sure that we get everything all lined up. So again, zipper pocket, lining zipper pocket will go against the flap. Everything is right sides together. Line up your center marks. So center marks are all being lined up. And the center mark on your side panel here will be where the center of your seam is on the main lining. So you'll line up the center main lining seam with the center mark on your side panel. And I'm going to stand because I can't really get a good view of this. So clipping it. Adding some clips. Again, side seam here on the main lining. Open it up and line it up with that side mark, side center mark on your side 
panel piece. So there's the side seam, center mark, it's all lined up. And then you have your center mark on your top band, line it up with the exterior. And then once you have all your center marks, or I guess in this case, quarter marks all lined up, we will continue clipping all the way around. Now this seam here, make sure you have it clipped so it's open, any of the seams. So this seam on the front panel. And you might have to shift things just a little bit. I didn't really mark my centers. Oh, they're good. So again, I'm just making sure that these seams here on the main panel where the main panel meets the side panels are open. See how it opened? So I've pushed it open. And the flap kind of pulls things down because of the weight of it. So there we go, we have the whole top all clipped. All our seams are clipped so that they are open and we want them to stay open as we're sewing. There we go. Now we're going to sew all the way around this edge using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And if you have an extension table, it might be helpful to have that on your machine now or use your free arm. right here. There we go. Something. Oh, it's this side. Pesky leg. All right, so start sewing using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And don't forget to check your stitch length as well. You want to make sure it's at the length you use for constructing your bags. Sometimes my clips fall off because I pull on them. So there's that seam. I'm making sure it's staying open. Another thing you could do too, before you start sewing your exterior and lining together, so even before you pin it, is base stitch those few seams open at the top. And then you don't have to worry about them folding over on you. So I'm just going all the way around, paying special attention to those areas where I have seams that I need to keep pressed open. And I'm coming back to where I started. So I'm back stitching. I'm going to move my table out of the way. So if you're sewing on a domestic machine, you can trim this seam allowance up here to remove the bulk. I'll be fine to go through all of that. And that's why it was important to have those seams all the way around pressed open. So now we're going to turn the lining out over the exterior, revealing the top edge of the bag.
and I'm just pulling my lining down, making sure it's nice and flat. And I'm going to reach in and make sure that seam stays pressed open up here. Take your time doing this because you want a really nice seam at the top here. It's going to be a little bit harder with the flap there. All right, so grabbing my extension table back, we need to have long thread tails because we're not going to backstitch. However, if you don't want to pull the thread tail through and you don't want to do it that way, that's okay. You don't have to. You can backstitch. Say if you had a busier fabric or your threads match perfectly and you know you're not going to see it, then you can definitely backstitch. But for this tutorial, she doesn't have us backstitch. She has us start on one of the side seams and top stitch all the way around. So no backstitching. Have your stitch length the length you like to use for top stitching. And again, no back stitching. And I'm just going to make sure everything is flat. And just take your time going around. If you're still finding that your machine is struggling, even with the trimming of the bulk in the top seam allowance there, try using a bigger needle, a walking foot. Sometimes a hump or jumper helps get over those bulky areas. Another tip is to use your seam whacker, so a rubber mallet, and hammer the seams to flatten them. And that often helps as well. So I'm just pulling my threads so that they're coming towards me so I don't run them over. So I'm coming back to where I started. Stop in that same hole. Long thread tails. Move my extension table. And now we're going to take our needle just as we did before and we're going to pull them through the seam just as we did before. So you're going to pull them through the seam one at a time. So take the pair on the first side and I'm going to cut them so they're the same ish length. Thread it through your needle. This is always hard for me. Thread it through your needle and then bring the needle through where the stitching is and we're going to come up towards that seam at the top here. So it's going to come out between the seam of the lining and exterior. I can't push this. Sometimes I need to use my pliers to help pull because I don't have a very good grip on my needle. And then repeat that for the second side. Whoops, where'd that go? Repeat that for the second side. So pull it up through the middle seam there. And 
and that worked. Now we're going to tie a knot. So it's coming out through the seam where the lining and exterior are. We're going to tie a knot. Just be careful how tight you pull because you don't want to break your threads just yet. Well, you don't want to break them at all. Then we're going to take these and we're going to pull them through between the lining and exterior, between the wrong sides. So it's a little bit of extra work, but it does help make for a beautiful finished bag. So going between that seam, through between the layers, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull this lining up so I can see what I'm doing better. There we go. Pushing it through between the two seams. to use pliers because I can't grab it with my fingers as well. And now I'm just going to knot it here too. I'm going to put them into two and knot them here as well. Make sure they're pulled all the way through. Check to make sure all looks good. Where did I go with that? Right there. So there you go, you got no back stitching, so we can put this all away. Now we need to turn the bag right sides out through the bottom here. So I'm going to grab the bottom and pull it out. Ow, I just bent my nail back. Pay special attention to turning these areas here where the curve is out. Just pushing everything out, getting my curves out as nice as I can. And you can already see how the bag is looking. I'm just going to snap my magnetic snaps together. You can already see how the bag is looking just like that. Once we give it a really good press, it'll look even better. Now we need to close the bottom. So you know how that we left the lining open. We need to close the bottom of the bag by pulling it through the lining, lining pocket opening. So open up your zipper pocket, pull the lining out through the zipper pocket. that. So this is coming out through the zipper pocket. We're going to clip this whole bottom together. 
and I messed up my shape of my bag again. Now, if you're like me and you've used a vinyl, it may have some wrinkles in it. You can just heat up your ironing board after we're done and put your hand inside the bag. And then as your hand's inside the bag, you'll just rub it over. So say my hand is inside the bag, you'll rub it over that spot that you warmed up and that'll help you get rid of those creases or wrinkles. And it may take a few times, but it does work. I do it with every bag that I make that's made out of vinyl. So now we have the bottom the bottom edge all clipped. We're going to sew that with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Then we need to box the corners. And to do that, what you do is you take the bottom and I just pull on the two sides and then line up the bottom seam and the side seam, and you can nest your two seams. So the lining side seam and the base seam, what you'll do when I say nesting is one of the seams will go to the left and one seam will go to the right. You can also press them open if you prefer, but I just do it that way. Take the bottom again and just pull on it. And when you pull on the two sides of the box corner area, naturally the seams will want to meet up. So place a clip, and then we're going to sew across that boxed corner using the seam allowance given in the pattern. All the way across. Sew the other side. And you'll notice I'm not trimming my threads right now. I'm not super concerned because they're inside the bag. Everything is closed up. These aren't going to poke through. If they do, I can just reach in and trim them out if somehow they've poked out. Now get your lining pressed back into your bag. Fix your bag as well so that your bottom is all nicely rounded. With a good pressing after, you'll get a really nice finished bag. Now we need to grab our lining out of the slip pocket, sorry, not our lining, our slip pocket out, the bottom of our slip pocket. And we're going to clip these edges together. And I just sort of take this seam here that's, that's raw, that's left, and I sort of push it down into the bag or into the bottom, into the pocket, should I say. Clip it together and then sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Trim your threads here. Push your pocket back into your bag. And I already installed my rivets. I chose not to go through the lining, but if you didn't install them yet, you can go ahead and install the, line, the, the rivets. I'm going to clip my sides together because I'm using the magnetic snaps. Pull my handle through the opening on the flap. Snap my flap together. And there we go, that's how it looks. Now we just need to attach our backpack straps. So attach one at the top, and you can have this going whichever way you want. If you want the strap to be so that you 
adjust it at the bottom here, which I think that's how I would want to wear it. I'm probably going to keep this bag for myself, to be honest with you, because I really love this color and I love the material I've used and I just love everything about it. And I know I didn't make it as a crossbody bag, but I can carry the handles and then I can clip this onto my scooter when I'm not using it, when I'm not carrying it, but I can just carry the handles like this. We'll see how I feel. I'll give it a whirl inside the house. Anyways, so that is how your L-piece back convertible backpack looks when you're done. I almost forgot the name of it, I won't lie. So that's how it all looks. We have a really beautiful backpack and I just think it's kind of secure like this. Now, if you wanna make it extra secure, you can even add a little lock or something on here. Say you're out traveling or you know, walking around where there's a lot of people, so in a crowded area and you're worried about people being able to get into your backpack. You could always add a little lock or something on top here so that they can't really get into your bag because this is locked and in order to get into it, they've gotta be able to move the handles and then undo this. So that is an option. You can always have it so that it's hooked. So lock it back here so it locks over top like that and then they wouldn't be able to get into your backpack. Just a little thing I thought of while I was looking at this and reading it over before I started making my bag. So again, this is your L-Piece convertible backpack. You are all done. I hope you enjoyed sewing along with me and maybe picked up a few tips and tricks along the way. Don't forget before you do take it out to show it off to the world to take lots of pictures and post it on social media because we all want to see your beautiful bags. Once again, thank you for sewing with me. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye and happy sewing.